Uh, welcome to the History Programs presentation series. Uh, this is our sixth presentation. Um, this one is on the War of 1812, Iroquois or Haudenosaunee uh, participation in the war, which is really difficult to find any of the uh, material uh, written in uh, any of the books regarding the War of 1812. Participants of the war, Great Britain, Native Americans, and uh, the United States, or Americas. Um, in any of the research in America, or the United States, it's Native Americans, but if you find um, information or, or uh, do research within Canada, they're called First Nations. Just thought I'd point that out. These were some of the Native nations that were um, actually part of uh, the War of 1812 starting in 1811, which was, precedes the War of 1812, um, and then goes through 1814. So we have the Wyandotte and a couple of the, the chiefs that I had found that participated, uh, which I thought was interesting, Chief Walk in the Water, which is actually a boat that, that the first Oneida um, immigrants came to Wisconsin on. The ship was called Walk in the Water. Um, Chief Roundhead uh, the Cree. Also the color coding, the, the red means they fought for the British and the blue fought for the Americas. The Cree has both um, the east, which is present day uh, Georgia, and the, the west, which is the Mississippi Territory. And they were later called the Red Sticks because of their traditional ways. The, the West Cree were uh, more traditional, and the East, it ended up that uh, during the War of 1812, they actually had a civil war. Uh, they, they fought against themselves um, because um, the Lower Creeks wanted to make an example of um, their power, they had more chiefs at the lower in, in Georgia than the upper in the, in the Mississippi Territory. And they actually sacrificed or killed um, Chief Little Warrior to make an example of who's in charge. Um, the Choctaw Nation, the Iroquois of New York, which consists of Red Jacket, Blue, Chief Blue Sky, and Corn Planter. Um, the Iroquois of the Grand River, which is in Canada, and Chief John Norton and Chief John Brandt. John Brandt is uh, the youngest son of Joseph Brandt. And I have that little note in there, adopted by Mohawk Nation under Joseph Brandt. Uh, John Norton was not a tribal member. Um, he became close. He has a mother that's Scottish and a father that was from another country. Um, so he is non-native, non but he was adopted into the Mohawk. Uh, the Potawatomi, Chief Blackbeard, the Sauk Nation, uh, Chief Blackhawk, and Tecumseh, with his brother, uh, the Prophet, uh, were Shawnee. Just to note, I think we had a bus of Choctaw Nation people here yesterday. Oh, really? Yeah. Yeah, touring all night. Oh, awesome. <clears throat> um, the Battle of Tippecanoe was in 1811, and this is significant primarily for Tecumseh and, and his gathering of, of the ideal of a confederate nation of, of Indians. Um, and he believed that it would, if the natives would put aside traditional differences and work together, they could stop the white encroachment on Indian lands. And the prophet, which is his brother, the upper right-hand corner, um, believed in the master of life, and he was told to give up all white customs and, and products, and they would not be set, sent into the irrelevant of heaven. So basically, if you would continue the white ways, you wouldn't go to the, to the afterworld with, within creation. Um, in the map, it shows where 
tip of canoe battleground was located in Indian, Indiana, Indiana Territory. That's just north of Lafayette today. Um, the white settlers around at that time were fearful because of the, the gathering of, with the, the nations and the confederation that the Tecumseh was, was getting together. Um, and they had requested from the U.S. government to do something about it. Um, reasons for the War of 1812. Uh, according to the 1783 Treaty of Paris, Great Britain was supposed to abandon all the forts in the Great Lakes region, which they didn't do, um, because that was outside the scope of the, the colonies. Um, there was really no enforcement in that territory. Um, 1807, British ship HMS Leopard fired upon the, the American ship Chesapeake, which outraged Americans, and they wanted something done. Um, ongoing impressment of American soldier, sailors into service of British native ships, uh, naval ships. Um, the British were stopping fleets of American ships um, and taking their sailors to fight for the British cause uh, against their will. Um, the British block, blockade of U.S. ports so supplies and, and exports couldn't come into the country, or imports couldn't come into the, come into the country. Um, the British incitement, instigating of Native Americans to violence against the American settlers, and the British were really good at this time at bribing and giving supplies, ammunitions, guns um, to the Native Americans to tip them one way or the other into battle especially on their behalf. Um, the United States, 1807, President Jefferson enacted the Embargo, Embargo Act, which closed the American ports to the British. So none of their, their um, supplies and, and goods, uh, merchandise, could come into the Americas. Um, that really had a hard in impact on the American economy. Um, June 18th, I wish I would have found this out earlier, I would have made um, that day uh, this presentation because June 18th was the declaration of war uh, against the British, which was just on Monday, which is kind of cool. Um, the Treaty of Garrett ended the war in, in December of December 24th, which was signed in uh, Ghent, Belgium, and ratified by the President in, in 1815. So during, from what I've seen, during that time frame, um, from the signing to the ratification, there were a couple thousand extra um, casualties of war, uh, basically down in, in the Battle of New Orleans. Um, the Haudenosaunee in the War of 1812. Uh, in the spring of 1812, several, several messages on both sides in Canada and the Americas were hopefully recommending that the Haudenosaunee would stay neutral. Um, young chiefs from, this is how it was spelled on the internet, Andagua, Onondaga and Cayugas living in the Americas attended a council fire at Grand Rapids in 1812 informing the council that there's going to be a war and they're on the brink of it. Um, Chief John Norton, that's his uh, Onondaga name, thought it would be best to serve the community, uh, the Grand Rapids community, uh, to be in alliance with the British. And he drew a lot of, lot of support from the Haudenosaunee tribes in Grand River. In, in Grand River. Excuse me. And he's the one that was adopted by the Yes. Mohawks. Yes. Uh, the Haudenosaunee within the United States and New York were all in support of neutrality. Um, and both sides, Grand Rapids and New York, distrusted both British and American governments. And they had good cause. Reasons for neutrality? Uh, they have no interest in the real motive for going to war with either side. Um, 
again, similar to the Revolutionary War, it was a, a war of brothers, so they didn't want to inter interfere. Um, they had the feeling that our bloodshed was, will not ensure com compassion to our widows and orphans. Um, neither will respect our tribes, so the British or the Americas wouldn't play favorites or they wouldn't hold to their promises, similar to the Revolutionary War. Uh, many warrior, warriors have already fallen in the wars against them. Uh, Americas possess all our lands except the small reservations that they lived on. Um, even with a victory, nothing more would come or um, broken promises would be given to the Haudenosaunee within the, the United States. Arguments for going to war, and this is primarily from uh, John Norton. Um, he preferred to live under the king rather than the Americans. Uh, most must support the king if attacked. They, the Americans, have always been the enemy of the aboriginal nations, and they're talking on both um, the American and the, the Canadian side. Uh, to remain neutral would be a disgrace to us. It would show we are deficient in courage and in a loyal affection to the king. If the Great Spirit should favor our efforts, might preserve our country from desolation. desolation. Um, I had also seen in, in my research that they had mentioned if the War of 1812 hadn't um, took place, all of Canada would be part of the uh, Americas. Because most of the, um, the people that live, were living in Canada at that time were Americans. Um, at this time, John, John Norton and several warriors joined the war in support of the British. He didn't influence a lot of uh, the chiefs and get their support, but a lot of the warriors during that time thought it was a good idea to support the king and, and the British in the effort. Um, the British invaded Black Rock, which that was really, really hard to find information on. And it was, it was interpreted that the Seneca and the Haudenosaunee attacked that were within the United States. And this drew the American uh, Six Nations into war on, the, on behalf of the American side. This is a list of the battles that I could find where there was um, participation by the Iroquois. Not so much the Battle of Tippecanoe. Um, but there were warriors that would gain um, support from chiefs to go and fight with Tecumseh. Um, so I just broke it down by year uh, with the, the battles that the Iroquois fought against. Um, I will get into the Battle of Queenston Heights and the Battle of Chippewa, which were significant battles. Um, and the Battle of Chippewa really ended the war for the Haudenosaunee because that's where the, it's around 80, 80 to 90 Iroquois fought against each other and they, once the battle was over they had found out that they had killed their brothers and um, cousins. The Battle of Cre Queenstown Heights um, it was led by uh, Stephen Van Rensselaer with a force of 6,000 and the British were led by Isaac Brock and Major General Schaaf and it, because of this battle General Schaaf actually later on after the war was appointed the governor of, of Canada or Upper Canada as they call it. Uh, the, the American forces were on the state of New York uh, they had to cross the, the river to the Canadian side and the boats were too small to house uh, their cannons, uh, ammunition and un enough soldiers to hold off and make an attack. So the majority of the 6,000 troops that the Americans had stayed on the, on the other side of the, of the river and never engaged in battle. Um, little more than a thousand made it across the river, uh, mostly militia 
uh, the militia refused, but very few militia and um, natives made it across the river. Um, Mohawks fought in this battle. They, they had a turning point in it, uh, and they fought for, for John Norton. Um, once General uh, Colonel Scott was across, finished the battle, he had found out that he was extremely outnumbered and decided to surrender. And upon surrendering in the morning, um, 500 American militia and, and militiamen came out of the woods outside of the heights and surrendered. And he was really disappointed with that, that they wouldn't engage in battle. <clears throat> the Battle of Fort Niagara, December uh, 1813. This is a really good map because it shows the Fort Niagara and the Queenstown, the Chippewa, uh, all the way down to Fort Erie, uh, where significant battles were also taken. But um, at Fort Niagara, General McClure uh, found out that he was outnumbered again, and he didn't even put up a fight, but he was told by the Secretary of War to burn the town of Niagara. And there were 400 homes that were born, uh, burned, so the women and children mostly that lived there were set out in the wilderness um, in the midst of winter. Um, a British force that was relatively small for this effort you know, walked in and took over the fort without a battle. Um, after the victory and the pillaging of, of um, Niagara, plans to loot and burn the Tuscarora village were made and it was found out by, by scouts and, and informants and that really piqued an interest and support for the Seneca, Tuscarora and Onondaga additional warriors to support the cause of the U.S. The Battle of Chippewa. <clears throat> this was the, the most prominent uh, battle against the, the Iroquois. Um, I also do genealogy, just as an aside, I do gene genealogy and I found out that I have a third or fourth great, great grandparent that actually died at the, the Battle of Chippewa. So it kind of hits home a little bit. And then reading, reading about how in this this area right here is where the main battle was, how um, <clears throat> militia and the Iroquois on both sides had tried to outflank each other and there was a, a fierce battle and, and that's where most of the Iroquois fought against each other. Um, the Americans had pulled back from the battle and then upon retreat they had found that they were actually fighting against other Iroquois from uh, the Grand River. So after this battle, um, they had decided to withdraw entirely from the War of 1812 and, and try to salvage what they could with the Confederacy. <clears throat> uh, the battle started out in the morning actually early morning with, with Iroquois snipers, which is kind of cool to, to hear that um, both the British and the Americans could rely on the sharpshooting and, and the accuracy of the Iroquois sharpshooters. So they kind of led and, and controlled most of the battle, um, what led up to the main, main battle. Red Jacket, as you see, was also fighting in the woods, and he was one of the survivors um, during the, the retreat. <clears throat> Upon finding out <clears throat> that they had killed their brothers and, and cousins, um, majority of, the, of the, the, the Iroquois warriors went back, but as, as I found, Norton had talked to only a handful to re-engage and stay fighting for the British cause. This is a map showing um, more of the popular battles during the War of 1812. 
Um, the red again are the British victories, and the blue are are the American victories. So it, <clears throat> I think there there was several, I can't say several, hundreds of battles that were fought up and down um, the colonies um, that I haven't listed, but there there's not a whole lot of information that's that's found on it. Um, so I just thought that was a, a nice picture to, to see, get a visual of the territory where a lot of the, the fighting took place. <clears throat> Results of the war, <clears throat> the, Amer the Americas received the, nor the Northwest Territory. We'll go back. Northwest Territory is all of back this way <clears throat> from, the, from the battle. That's the area that they were supposed to abandon their forts from the 1783 treaty anyway. Um, and the British, the British had actually wanted to make an Indian state in the Ohio Valley or the Ohio Territory. Um, the war established the U.S.-Canadian border um, and the writing of the Star, Span Star Spangled Banner came from the Battle of, of uh, Baltimore at Fort McHenry and the economy boost was enormous after the, after the battle, after the War of 1812 ended, and the British lost its hold on the Americas as a result. And some sources 